I wanted to do today was come home and I wanted to do a bunch of like fucked up boys. I wanted to do like fuck it and get money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, guys. Give me just a second. That's not at all what I meant to do. Okay. Hi, Steven. <sighs> All right. Hi, Sue. Hi, Ravenheart. Sonia. Hello, hello. How is everyone tonight? I look so white in this lighting. I wonder if I turn this down, if maybe I don't look quite so transparent, but you can still see. Yeah, that's a little better. We'll see. <laughs> Hi, Isis. Hi, Jack. Oh, so, um, it's almost the end of the week. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm telling you right now, when I left today, I thought, really? How can it not be Friday yet? I'm like dying. I think uh, it's the first full week after the holidays. And even the holiday week that was supposed to be short, I thought was way too long. So you can actually stay for a while. Yay! I'm so happy. Must be you don't have to get up in like a couple hours to go to work. <laughs> Hi, Owls Perch. Hi, Kristen, Kelsey. And Johnny and Cass. Hi, honey. Um, so, Cass, do you know... When, oh, of course, my um, calendar is on my phone. I do, but it's still early. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm coming on early because I usually come on later, but I'm kind of tired. I did not. Oh, my goodness. That's one of, that's the other thing I was going to do. Damn it. Hold on. Uh, Frankie or Joey? I know you guys are ignoring me because now you know. <laughs> Joey! What? <laughs> Can you get my package downstairs? It's literally the little couch that I sat on. It's literally to the right of the couch right there. Thank you, and I'm sorry. Where are you, where are the package? My package. It's a box. The box is open. I haven't done anything with it, but I, because yes, I can't, I know, I, well, you know, it's funny, I, I always say to um, my admin people, what else was I going to do, but I don't always remember to tell them ahead of time what I was going to do. Thank you. That's what I thought. No, but Joey was Right? <laughs> okay. So now I have it. I'm going to unbox it. <laughs> okay. So I do have, I have a package to unbox. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, That I've been waiting. I like open the box and I know people kind of look at it a little bit. Um, I got the ding. Am I late? No, you're not late. I just got on like four minutes ago and you know me. It takes me forever. You didn't tell me you had a package. Yes, I did. I know because I try not to say too much until I can actually open it. Like I, I'm not, a, I, I, unboxing it is the wrong word. I, I cut open the box so that I don't have to do it live because I'm not real great at cutting open boxes live. So I don't want to look too ridiculously stupid. So I always cut it and then, but I don't, you know, pull stuff out until I'm live. <laughs> Well, hello from the Netherlands. <sighs> I'm sure everything. Yes, actually, there is. There must be a lot in there, and there's stuff. I don't. Even the stuff on top smells really good. So, yay! Um, I know you talked about. Um, shoot, what are those pods called? I'm excited to see those pod things, though, because we talked about, it and I was like, oh, I want to see them because I got to figure out. I know there's some stuff I could do with them. Anyways, okay, let's get to it, though. Uh, I do have a couple things to talk about. I have a whole bunch of unboxings to do. Oh, a lava lamp. Crepe myrtle, that's it. Oh, yeah, there is one over there. 
wonder if it still works. It's funny, this room has kind of become the, you know, this is where we put stuff right now where other, it, you know, it doesn't fit in the room and that kind of stuff. Um, so I, literally I have still, oh, and I forgot one, I think. Do I have the other one in here? I have one, two, three, four, five, technically five unboxings still. And I haven't gotten to them this week because I've had a lot of patients this week. So I haven't been able to do unboxings at work. Shelly's here. Yay. Hi, honey. I'm hoping, Shelly, that really soon. Am I saying that wrong? I feel like I'm, it's kind of my Rochester accent, though. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping that we're going to be able to really get into uh, the artwork for the tarot deck soon. If you're into it still, I know it's been a while and I apologize. Anyways, five unboxings that I have to do. We're not doing them tonight, but I'm going to do at least one that is both tarot and oracle. That's what I was going to say. All right, let's do, um, and Witchy Palooza, we'll talk about Witchy Palooza at the end. Okay, so I do have this awesome box, and it smells really good. So, ooh, look at, there's, these are bags, right? Oh, look at that. I love me a homemade bag. And they smell really good. What did you, is that oil on them or what? They smell really good. I love that. That's really nice and big. And because they're um, like homemade of yarn, I ended up having to redo some of the art I was making for you. That's okay. No big deal. Um. Because they're homemade, that means they like have built in uh, cushion. So uh, I like I can put decks in there or the oil I wear. It smells really good. I don't know what it is, but it smells really good. And I love homemade bags. <laughs> of course, my husband is going to go, bags? Like you need more bags? He doesn't have to see them. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's super cute. I love that. Actually... Oh, you know what? That is like the perfect size, I think, for almost, whoo, it's going to be close, for uh, the deck that I'm unboxing tonight. Look at, this is the Relative Tarot. And it is, I think it's like, it's like it was made for it. That is like perfect. Look at, it's like it was made for it. Lately I've been burning vampire blood. Cool. Um, so that's the deck we're gonna unbox. Awesome, thank you. Oh, look at, oh my goodness. These are so cute. I have to say, these are great memory stuff. My grandma crocheted and um this one in particular kind of this one too oh look at that one that's cute too i love these um so we'll auction off a couple of these if i can give them up maybe we'll see <laughs> but no i will i i swear at least one of these i will auction off but i i do love them um but they remind me of my grandma's um she used to make uh what'd she call them penny socks I think because her and her sisters would pay um, play euchre and they would um, have sacks of pennies that they would bet on their euchre so that's kind of what it reminds me of is the um, penny socks <laughs> I figured they'd be good for crystals or decks absolutely they're gorgeous perfect <gasps> look at that one oh my god that's the cutest thing for your crystals I might have to auction off a couple of these, but I'm not that one. I really like, I don't know. I will auction off a couple at least, I swear. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Look at these. They are so cool. Now, is this the crepe myrtle? That is so cool. 
I am going to study the hell out of this and figure out what I can. Oh, this is Magnolia. <gasps> That's so cool. I have actually, I have lots of cool stuff for Magnolia. So there's a bunch of Magnolia in here. They are awesome. So this must be the crepe myrtle. So. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can see these. Hold on, but look, they're like little pods and they close around. You could totally do something like a spell for protection because they like close around stuff. So if you put herbs and um, a little uh, crystal chip in there and then dip it in wax, it it works just as good as the uh, witch's purse. But I bet you there's other stuff I can do with them too. But th it's so cool. I can totally do spells with these. And they're smaller even. So you can like throw them in the fire. Same thing. Or throw them to the wind. Or uh, throw them in a uh, running river or creek bed or anything like that. Or bury them. We should arrange a local botanical exchange. Yes, absolutely. If you're coming to Witchy Palooza, you definitely find stuff like this that we wouldn't have up here in the north. And we'll, you know, exchange stuff that we have that you don't have. Throw them on someone's doorstep, right? That would make really good, uh, um, you know, like, all right, let's say it hexes. Or not hexes, like good luck stuff too, if you want to do that. And look at, I love the little ones. They're so damn cute. Chuck them at someone annoying. Yes, I have my little karma stone for that too. Hi, Dana. Hello, my sweetheart. So, Heather, thank you so, so much. I swear I'm going to auction a couple of these off. I just have to decide which ones I can part with. <laughs> Hi, honey. Um, so who else? Did I miss anyone else? I'm sure I did. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Uh, Erica, hello, Kelsey in Mississippi. Cool. There's seed in there still too. That's so cool. I know nature is really neat. Book lioness. Deb is here. Hi, honey. So, um, really, really cool. I really appreciate those, and I'm really going to look at what I can do with those. Magnolias, I have quite a few spells already that I can do stuff with. Um, now, so is that the magnolia seed? You would think I would know, because I actually lived in North Carolina for a year. And I remember the big white blossoms, but I don't remember the seed. Can't remember. Yeah, Dana's had had a tough week, huh? So extra energy this week, right? Um, but she has been, yeah, it's seed cone, cool. She has been getting together stuff for the auction, which, you know, kind of helps, like pine. Cool. I love it. Okay, should we do the unboxing first and then talk about Witchy Palooza? What do you think? Do you guys want to see the deck first? Yes. Psst, Mama, I made that Llewellyn order and I have that secret thing on the way. Thank you, Cass. I appreciate it for someone who happens to be here. <laughs> we are going to do our candles for the auction. Awesome. Um... And Cass, did you answer me about when you have the order coming in? You have a Scully order coming in, right, soon? I wanted to do another crystal auction uh, before we do Dana's auction, kind of in between. When you have like a Scully or Dragon order or something like that, something, a big order come in, we can do uh, another crystal auction this month. So for one thing, maybe I can pay off some of... Um, 
some of my big, huge box that I have over there. I actually have money, I think, for you. I'm just waiting for my credit card payment to go through so that I can give it to you. <laughs> we got dragons, but yeah, they'll be cheaper. Cool. She changes everything she touches and everything she touches changes. Yay! Okay, let's do the unboxing first. So, <clears throat> we are doing a sale next week, I think. So, you're saying not next week, in other words. Uh, so, the week after that is... Um, where's my damn calendar? Here it is. Leaving. Oh, you're leaving the 23rd. Oh, so not until February. Is that what you're saying? Why don't I have a calendar here? This is so annoying. <laughs> damn it. We can do next week. So next Friday is, what's the date for next Friday? I'm losing my mind. Does Friday work for you guys? Maybe we should do Saturday, like, during the day. Or do, do you guys like the night ones? We never really talked about doing a different day. I, Of course, I shouldn't say that before I okay it with Cassie. So this is when I'm coming over, Cass. <laughs> the 17th. So do you guys want to do it 17th that night? Or... What do you think, Cass? Do you want to try like a Saturday instead? Tell me, people, what do you guys think? We've done Friday nights. Evenings are good for you. We can start earlier, too. I know, except Fridays, I have to work till 4.30 all the time. That's why I, we end up, you know, not starting until later because it takes me a while to get out there with traffic. Try a day one or at least uh, like an earlier evening. So like maybe Saturday at five or something like that. Maybe we could do one Saturday maybe. Okay. Well, let me know, Cass. We'll announce it, you know, this weekend. I'm making some small kits and cute jars. Ugh, jars. We got to love those jars. And uh, I've got lots of bones and skulls. Yes, Dana has bones and skulls, guys, on her property. I'm really excited to see what she's got because I'm getting some of them, too. <laughs> Yay. Hi, little bee. I've been jar-obsessed. I know, right? Ugh. Can't help but be jar-obsessed. Who isn't jar-obsessed? <laughs> All right, y'all, I have these branches with insane thorns. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, are they like um, hawthorn? I, I always call them hawthorn branches, even though I don't think they're, my stuff is actually hawthorn from a mesquite tree. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, 23rd or 24th, we leave. <gasps> is Tucson already? Really? Oh, my gosh. What the hell? I feel like we were just talking about it and it had just happened. Holy moly. That just goes so fast. Y'all are going to make me so broke. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Okay, let's do this. Uh, the Relative Tarot. So, um... I've really been waiting for this one, guys. I think the quality of this deck looks amazing. Um, and did I see Thomas in there? Yes, I did. Hi. Um, the quality of this deck looks amazing. And it's both tarot and oracle. Um, and I did get it on Kickstarter, but I, I know it's going to be for sale. At, honestly, oh, do I see a, yeah, it must not be, it must be for sale on her private website, which of course, shit, I didn't get ready. <laughs> uh, hi, Claire. It's good to see you. 
I hope you're doing okay. All of you who are, um, you know, in, well, let's see, one of the natural disaster zones, Australia, uh, uh, Puerto Rico with the earthquakes now, um, the Middle East with the, you know, idiot going to war. The It's, it's insane. So I hope you all stay safe. Good. This cat, I've been working on learning making cone and sense, and he keeps knocking stuff over. Oh, that's the kitties, let me tell you. Okay, so the first thing is um, when you open the box, now I have to say, um, I've had this deck now. I haven't done anything with it because I try not to do very much with it until I unbox it. The only thing that um, I dislike is that there is extra room on the top of the box. It's kind of hard to tell, but. There's this, it's about this much deeper until the cards start. Um, and so the cards kind of, you know, move around in there. So I might have to put them in a bag or something uh, or take them out of this box, really. I'll probably put them in a bag and take them out of this box. The box itself is really great. Um, the inside is beautiful. The coloring of this deck is really beautiful. It reminds me of like an antique, uh, an antique deck kind of. How much deeper? <laughs> it's this, this deeper. See this right here. It's about an inch and a half, two inches. <laughs> well, you got Betty. Yeah, that's right. I got bags down. Um, so, and that's what I uh, did. It actually comes with a uh, tarot cloth, I believe. Now. On Kickstarter, it came with a tarot cloth. I think it comes with a tarot cloth anyways, like when you get it, um, which is like a real silk tarot cloth. I don't know if you can tell. Hopefully, you can see this. It's really gorgeous. You see how it says wands, cups, swords, and pentacles? It is not a thicker one. It's kind of thin. Oh, you mean put a thicker one in there. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I could do that. Except I try not to, when the box is that nice, I try not to carry it around too much because then I bang it around in my bag and that kind of thing. Really cute tarot cloth. The only thing I have to say, and I haven't tried this one, so I really shouldn't say anything. But when they're this thin and light, as pretty and gorgeous as that is, I'll try it tomorrow now that I'm unboxing it. Um, usually when I do uh, readings, I like the um, tarot cloths that are kind of a little bit more substantial and either lined or thicker. Um, like this one is the one I've been using a lot lately. That someone gave me. Um, see, because it's lined and it's like a heavier cloth. Because when you're putting um, cards on it, it doesn't come up. Like when you are trying to put cards on this thin thing, um, it moves the cloth all over the place. You know what I mean? So as gorgeous as that is, um, if I had a cover on it or something, perhaps, but it, it would be hard to um, to actually do a spread or something on it um, because it kind of moves up. It pulls up when you pull a card up. It pulls up with the cards. But it's gorgeous. I love it. I just wish it was a little bit more substantial so it would stay in place. That's all. Um, so you uh, pull. There isn't a box with the deck. Like that's just the deck. It's in the box itself. It has the little ribbons that you can pull out. Um, that cloth is amazing. Imagining that pain really makes me cringe. I know it, honey. That's true, little bee. You know, I don't think about laying on the left side to ease digestion. Um, we learned that in x-ray because we always do a left lateral decubitus because your stomach then will be on the bottom. Um, and you'll see the levels better. But it's funny, you don't think to tell people that. So that's a good tip. Um, you could line it yourself. Yeah, I am, D, I am not that talented. I wish I was. I could do it with fabric glue, but I, it's always, it's not very even and it's, um, 
I'm not that good at it. <laughs> okay, so the deck itself reminds me of like an antique kind of deck. Here's the back. It's just that really pretty, it's almost brown, maroon kind of. Fight some felt to put under it. Yeah, I was thinking that. The edges are done already for you um, in that gorgeous, it's like a brown maroon color almost. It's really, really gorgeous. I like the edges of this deck even. Cardstock is really good. It's one of those, um, I believe they're plastic cardstock now that they're um, matte finish and fairly smooth. It looks like brass, kind of, yeah, coppery, not copper, I don't know. But it's gorgeous, though. Like, see how my my um, sweater is like a purple, a real dark purple? It's almost that, but a little bit more brown in it. Um, I love this new cardstock stuff. I love it. Like, it shuffles wonderfully, and it seems to um, not chip and not... Uh, break down, and I, I really, really love it. So, here is the full card. Like I said, this deck I've been waiting for for a while. It reminds me of like antique images, old timey kind of images, and I really like that kind of. There's a an old Oracle deck that I had at one point, and I can't find. So I must have I don't know somewhere in the moves called. Um, Antique erotic Victorian erotic antique Victorian. It's it reminds me of this. It's kind of um, burlesque kind of vintage pictures of mostly women um, that are vintage looking, and I really like that look. Here's the magician. Antique erotica. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> That's it. Um, I believe it's out of print now, so I can't get it anymore. I mean, I could if I wanted to spend like $100 or some ridiculous thing. But I haven't been able to find it since uh, we moved at a decent price. So, But I love the, um, you know, the vintage looking images of people who, you know, are 20s, 30s, 40s, the decade. Are there belly dancers? Boy, I bet there is. Here is the Empress. Hey, who needs groceries anyways, right? Exactly. So look at, I believe, doesn't that look like a hookah sitting next to her? Hi, Donna. I hope you guys can see these okay. I just love these Im images. Here is, now, that was the Empress. Damn it. Some of them are not in order because they moved around. I'm sorry. Hold on. So first was the High Priestess, which there's two High Priestess cards. There's a, a, like two of a lot of cards in here. So catch me because some of them are more witchy and magical for those kind of clientele. So if you have like us guys or you know, somebody that you know is pagan or witch, you can pull this card. I love how the bottom of the cards are set up, right? I know it. It um, Now, I was trying to learn the um, where it says the 2011-2. That is, has to do with your life path card. And because mine is so screwy, I, I had a hard time understanding what she was trying to say. Um... But I'll, I'll try to do another video explaining it once I figure it out. Because I'm doing a course that she's doing specifically of this deck. <clears throat> anyway, so this is the witchy high priestess. And this is the non-witchy high priestess. So if you have those people who... Don't say it, Jen. Don't say it. I'm not going to say hypocritical people even though I just did. You have those people who like to do tarot readings, um, but don't want to see any magical witches. Then you can put this high priestess in. 
So there's no offense. Um, and there's several cards that she's done that to, and we'll we'll go through them. Empress. The Emperor. <laughs> I knew someone like that long ago. I did too. I'll tell you, Catholics are one of the biggest tarot. Um, they're some of my biggest clients because Catholics love to get tarot readings. Love it. Here's the Hierophant. Wild DM is good too. I must be missing some of the conversation. All right, there's there are three different lovers cards. Why does she have more color? It's I know it looks like that. Um, it's still muted colors. It just, it, there's some cards that have a little bit more color than others, which is Catholic light. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so there's three lovers cards, and you can tell the difference if you really look. Um, this one is a man and a woman. This one is two women. And this one is two men. Now, you can do that a number of ways. You can, um, you can take those out of the deck or you can leave them in the deck. And to me, regardless of what your sexual orientation is, if I pulled a card that had two men on it, then to me, that would say that I'm going to have a great relationship with uh, men who could be friends. That doesn't, you know, the lover's card is a great relationship. It doesn't mean necessarily a sexual relationship. And don't forget that the lover's card has, there's a connotation there, a different meaning about choosing a correct path with your relationships. So at that point, that could also mean that. All right, here is the chariot card. Episcopalianism is basically Anglicism here. It's the whole Henry VIII thing. It was uh, a way of being Protestant the Catholic way. Exactly. Leave them in and get more chances of lovers. Exactly. Hi, Susie. <laughs> Here is justice. Now, there are also two justice cards and two strength cards. And for me, I'll tell you right now, I probably will set aside one justice and one strength. The reason she did that is because there is a justice card at number eight. Hi, Kay. I just really started. There's a justice card at number eight and a strength card at number eight. And then also a justice card at number 11 and a strength card at number 11. So I will probably take out the number eight justice and the number 11 strength. Because for me, that I, I work with RWS a lot more. You could ascribe the maiden mother crone to raspberry leaves. Helps with menstrual problems. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right? It kind of is an all-inclusive deck, and it uh, has a whole bunch of different ways to do it, depending on how you like to read. Here's the Hermit card. Love that. And like I said, the numbers at the bottom of the cards, I will try to do a video. You guys try to remind me. I will try. Hi, Hexen. I will try to do a video about what those numbers card means. Um, I read in her book, uh, it, it has something to do with your life path numbers. And I, I got confused because my life path numbers um, are already, like I only have one. Some people have two. Some people have a way to do three. I only have one. And then they talk about the... Um, if your life path numbers are 19, 10, and 1, 
then it means this. And and I only like have one, so I'm I it confused me. <laughs> so here's the wheel of fortune. And oh yeah, there's two wheel of fortunes. So here's the wheel of fortune with the woman and the wheel of fortune with the man. Um, how do you figure out your life path numbers? Okay, Cass, I'll tell you. Um, you add up. There's that's why there's a couple different ones. You add up your birthday. So mine is September, which is nine twenty sixth. So you can add up nine plus twenty six plus nineteen seventy two, and you get a number. And then you add all of those numbers together and you get another number. I have that one. I'm three. So yours is the Empress. But if yours is three, what did you add to get three? One and three or one and two or two and one or... What did you get to get to three? What was your number before that? Sorry, I'm waiting for her, guys. I apologize. I know it's the delay sometimes as we're waiting. <laughs> Three, oh, three and zero. All right, then that's different. Then you truly are Empress. All right. Uh, I don't want to, like I said, I want to go over it now, but it it's those numbers on the bottom. Some people are a 20, 11, 2. Some people are so. Hi, Kay. And hi, Sonia. All right, so here's, then here's the alternate justice and or the alternate strength for 11. Here's the hanged man at 12, which is Houdini, I think. I'm pretty sure that's Houdini. You see it? Um, talk about sacrifice, right? All right, there are two death cards. So this is one of the death cards. Don't you love these images, though? There's something about the vintage images that, um, yeah, me too. I really like the kind of old-timey look of them, and they feel fantastic. The, the quality of the deck is great. Here's the second death card. So again, we have a male representative of death, and we have a female representative of death. Then there's only one temperance card, which I love that temperance is a man. Um, it's just something about the way he looks. He reminds me of like, a, I was going to say like a, um, what do you call him? A, not a townie. We used to call them, um, I'm trying to think, the people who traveled in carnivals, car a carny, or um, at, like a circus worker or something. It kind of reminds me of that. So I love that. Gypsy, yeah, kind of. No dancers yet. Oh, I can't, I don't know, honey. I can't remember. <laughs> there might have been. <laughs> Shit. You didn't expect me to actually remember that, right? Here's the devil. I love that the devil is a woman here. Uh, the tower. Where's my magnifying glass? Because these are... Really cool. Oh, I got to turn my Christmas lights off this weekend. 
Really neat uh, looking image though. Damn it, I need those Christmas lights off. Here is the star card, which again, I just love. These old tiny images are neat. Muted black and white with the splashes of color. Yeah, it's uh reminds me of like the sepia, but it does have little splashes of color here and there, which I'm really loving. Here's the, actually, okay, there's two moon cards. So this is one, how cool. That is a cool, I love her face in there. I usually, I'm not uh, always a fan of the face in the moon, but that's an actual face. Like, it's not necessarily a drawn face. That's pretty cool. Now, this one, I like too. Even though it's a drawn face, it's still neat looking. Different energy there. What is she looking at? Good question. Uh, only one sun card. So here's the sun. They opened up a speakeasy. <gasps> That's so cool. Boys came over to play. <laughs> no creepy babies in the sun. You prefer the first moon? Here's judgment. Yeah, I think I like the first moon better too. I don't mind the second one, but I think I like the first one better. This is one I wish she had done a second one too, just because this is too angel-y for me. And the angel calling the dead to rise again, that just doesn't work for me for judgment. But that's all right. Uh, there is two world cards, because one is universe. Oh, look. Honey, I think we have your dancer. There it is. So there's one, which is the universe card. Yay! And then the world card. Which almost also kind of looks like a dancer, just a very different kind of dancer, right? Like a Russian, what, uh, the Tchaikovsky kind of dance. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Scandinavian. I Very cool that they have different energies here. Um, I'm going to try to go a lot faster because we still have the whole Oracle deck too. And it's, we're at 43 minutes. Okay. So Ace of Pence, uh, there's lots of Rider weight symbolism in the minors here, which helps me. I think that's great. She just put some of the Rider weight symbolism in with vintage images, which I thought was really neat. I kind of like that a lot. It's like it has both. Here's the four. Here's the five. We're outside the church window here. Snowing, kid, and beggar. Here's the six. Seven. Oh, is it eight o'clock? No. Hey, Frank. Maybe I'll be done by eight. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, right. Here's the eight. Hold on one second. Hey, Frankie. Oh, never mind. I did. Never mind. Never mind. I'm good. I thought I forgot to um, record the Jeopardy thing because my family and I were doing, you know, the greatest of all time Jeopardy. We're doing that. And my goal is to get at least one question from each round correctly when, you know, the greatest of all time, all the geniuses are on. So far, I've done very well. Uh, nine of pence. Sorry, I know I'm going faster. Ten of pence. Uh, 
And then the court cards are backwards. So page, knight, queen, and king. Uh, I watched Tom Benjamin's walk through this and was adamantly at a no, but I do like all the optional cards. I'm watching this one and it's like, ah, oh, maybe, uh-huh, see? The more you see of a deck, the more it's like, oh, maybe. <laughs> Serana, you live in Scranton, Pennsylvania? That's hilarious. I know Scranton has a lot of other things, but I, of course, will always remember it for being the office. Ace of Swords, like I said, very Rider weight. They just put in uh, some vintage images with it, too. Hi, Carrie. Well, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. Um, I I'm I love the deck. I can't wait to actually start using it. Two of Swords, and I can't wait for the um for the class. Actually, I'm kind of curious about some of the stuff, like uh, some of the multiple cards and. Here is the Three of Swords. But everyone knows Scranton. <laughs> I lo look at, so this one to me, again, a little bit different take. I love uh, that there's a sword not only through the hearts here, but there's one through his head too, which is really when we're talking about heartache, isn't that like the hardest thing? For me, the heartache part was always uh, remembering that it wasn't my fault for not leaving earlier. Or was it, you know, you, your head does all kinds of crazy things to you when you're in heartache. And so to me, having a sword through the head makes almost more sense than through the heart. So here's the four. How exciting to have the creator here. I appreciate you being here. Here is the five. I have to say, we finally have enough snow to call this a true Muskoka winter. And now it's supposed to warm up and freeze rain. I know, okay. We're supposed to have um, flooding because it's we're supposed to be in the 50s. So all our snow is going to melt and flood everything. Here's the six. So I love that we still have the boat. I love that the swords are still there and they're all around her and she's still moving forward. The seven, I love this face. Now, hold on, let me get my magnifying glass out because you guys know my old eyes. So you see the face here. That is a face of the seven of swords if I ever saw one. He is the most suspicious looking dude I have ever seen in my life, which I love. <laughs> Sometimes the Seven of Swords is just like, eh, nonchalant. <laughs> Mine is whack, but works. Oh, I, this is my favorite magnifying glass ever made because it was from a, a gift from my mama Lil. He's from a Russian ballet company. Really? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's so great. I love it. Too often, the Seven of Swords are just kind of nonchalantly walking, and you can't really tell that there's any anything backwards about it, anything sneaky, anything out of the way. Here's the eight. Again, I love that in this one even, the bounds that she is bound by, and again... Uh, are drawn in. So guess what? She can just as easily erase those binds and not be caught up in it. She doesn't want to. She's kind of feels like she's stuck, but she really isn't. I've been using a magnifying glass lately. It's amazing how much detail. I know. Hi, long-haired, skinny-eyed toe. Absolutely. Okay. I, um, so I grudgingly had to admit that I need, nope, you didn't miss the cups yet, that I need, uh, my, 
reading glasses on more than I wanted to. Uh, and for decks like Shadowscapes that have really good detail in it or uh, Deviant Moon, they have little details that sometimes you miss, that my magnifying glass is awesome. So here is the nine. Hexen, is Hexen still here? Our nine of swords, one of our favorite cards of the deck. Ah, and the Alice Tarot, yes. Um, I, so in this one, she's very obviously waking up. So guess what? Her perceived fears, not real. She's waking up. I know I love the Alice Tarot too. It took me so long to get that deck because, you know, it was thousands of dollars before they redid it. As a matter of fact, I just, just, just ordered the, um, Mythical Creatures decks which is the next one that Baba Studios is coming out with. Or is she screaming? She could be. Because, and again, if it works for you, it works. If you see that as more of a real, um, like, nightmarish, terrifying scream, that works for you. All right, the Ten of Swords. I love that they're all drawn in. She's actually, but I thought it was a good fit. Yeah, she's singing. That's great. So ton of swords. They are all drawn in, guys. And guess what? It means they're not lethal. You can get up again. You may feel like you're at the bottom, but you can get up again. Uh-oh, now I'm starting to sing. I get down again, but I get up again. What the hell is that? <laughs> Page of Swords. Mythical Creature Standard Size is finished printing. They have to cut and package. Limited edition may be delayed because they don't like how it came out. Yay! Well, I'm good. I, I'm so glad that I'm poor and I can only get the, <laughs> the um, standard size then. I'm so excited. Here's the page. Come coming, yes. I get knocked down. Thank you. Yes, I get knocked. And then it gets the logger out. I get the da da da. I get the. <laughs> Here is the knight. I hope I can get the mythical creatures watercolor. I know. It was supposed to ship in January. I haven't heard yet if it's still going to ship in January. Now, how did you find that out? Who knew that? Um, Essence. How did you know that? Because I haven't seen, I checked Instagram. And I haven't seen anything lately on Instagram. And I haven't seen anything lately on Facebook. Baba Studios posted it on Facebook uh, today. Really? Darn it. I didn't look today. Here's the king. King looks very stately here. Highly intelligent dude. All right, here we go. Ace of Wands. Love the Rider Waite uh, wand sitting in here. We just talked about how uh, the Pentacles was the only wand that doesn't have the leaves around it, right? So the Ace of Swords has the leaves around it. The Ace of Wands has the leaves around it. And when we get to the cups, the cups should too. Here's the two. Now I always talk with the two about the portal and this time she's literally standing in the portal and holding the moon in her hands, which to me I really like because the moon is more about my dreams. Uh, you know, my dreams come from shadow all the time. And so for me, I like better, I think, that the moon is the, oh, see now, it might not even be the moon. I don't know, it could be the earth too. Um. But I like that, to me, I see the moon. She's actually standing in the portal. So she's already moving forward. Here's the three. And opposite 
uh, from what we... You're changing Lay Layla's diaper so literally I have a moon in my hands. <laughs> well, it's probably not as sweet smelling as I always imagined the moon to be, but that's okay. It's probably just as beautiful. Uh, the three is at a different angle. So now we're looking at his, his, hers, uh, face as they are looking out at their future, right? As they are beginning their, um, their, what do I want to say? As they're beginning all of their work to set out how they want to go about walking towards their future brainstorming that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> i love this one this gorgeous pair of what i i don't know picture as sisters their journey yep that's true i love the um the use of rider weight just mixed right in with these vintage images. Love it. Five of Wands. So Five of Wands here is perfect. If you're a music person. Hi, Nicole. Oh, my God. Football talk in the background. Yes, Ben. I'm so glad. You know, with nine people in the house now, of course, you're going to hear the football talk. Um, so I love that the conflict here is uh, music. You can tell that these are like the, the orchestra people and they are not listening to each other whatsoever, right? <laughs> so the conflict is not life or death conflict, but it is sometimes very annoying and sometimes very challenging. And six of wands. Love the cards. So old world feel. Uh, me too. I know. And like I said, that deck that I've been looking for for a while um, to replace mine. What did we say it was? Antique, erotic, antique. Shoot. I lost it again. Antique. Ah, uh, something Oracle. That's what it reminds me of is that kind of feel to it. So the victory here is oh, to me all in his face. I hope I can get this. Look at his face. Erotica, thank you, Dana. His face is, hell yeah, I'm victorious. And what are you going to do about it, bitches? <laughs> right? And we have the victory wreath next to him. Seven of Wands. Nice deck for the new 20s. Oh, I know, it's so weird that it's 2020. And the flappers and stuff, we totally should be having flapper parties, right? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe for Witchy Palooza, we'll do flapper parties. Love that. Eight of Wands. He is going on a magic carpet ride, but with the magic wands. Love it. Love the beard. There's something about that beard. How mythical and mystical does he look with that beard? Nine. Oh, gorgeous. Look at her leaning in. Really struggling to move forward. Oh. Hi, Leah Lynn. Oh, what a struggle to move forward. Just every inch. It's like every inch is a battle. When I, uh, it's one hell of a beard. When I was young, I didn't have a good sense of time. So 2020 would be in my 90s and on my deathbed. Well, everybody always thinks of that. Um, I, I talk about sometimes um, Prince, um, the song 1999. I remember singing that and thinking, gosh. I'll be old when that happens. When 1999 hits, I'll be old. I remember that very clearly. So you young people, it just comes up on top of you all of a sudden. <laughs> the burden of the Ten of Wands. Boy, does she feel that. Yeah. Oh, just 
just that bent posture. Does she even have a cane? She does. She can't even stand up straight with this burden. But in 2020, I'll be 22. I'll be quiet. You're still young then. <laughs> but you were my age in 1999. Oh my gosh. Shut up, Ben. <laughs> I was your age in 1999. Well, I thought I was going to be old, but I was not. <laughs> I was very young still. I was a whole 10 years old. Shut up, Leland. <laughs> Hi, Bebow. Oh, look, wait, there's two 10 of wands. Yes. I, I have to say, first of all, this one I love. This one, very different take on it. I love this too, but in a very different way. I definitely will be using the first one. This one is a little bit different. If I can turn back time. Oh, you're going to get me to sing again, Shauna. 1999, I was nine. Cass, you cannot speak. You could be my baby. You know that. 1999, you were nine. All right, well, not my baby, but you could be my child. <laughs> All right, and then the courts for wands. I am, I'm a lot of people's second mamas. I was three. I was 18. All right, be quiet. <laughs> Paige. I beat y'all because I wasn't even a sperm yet. <laughs> I was a mother of three by then. I know, 1999. Now, let me think. What, did I have three? No. I had two. I did not have three yet. Here's the night. Now, is that a knight of wands or what? He is fierce. He is ready to go. He is afraid of nothing. He is beating his own drum. He's charging out his own path. I love that one. Shelly was three. Jack was seven. All right, people. <laughs> three in diapers. So glad that's over. All oh, right. <gasps> honey, is Honey still here? Look at, here's another dancer for the Queen of Wands. Oh, come on, my damn phone. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, is she that creative fire energy? She is confident. She is absolutely dancing to the beat of her own drum. She's connected to that wand in perfect harmony. She also has the mountains around her. She, that's Matahari, is it? Oh, that's perfect. Ugh. Perfect. I'll be 50 on Samhain. Woo! And look at the King of Wands. Perfect, too. Oh, I love him. Ah, come on, phone. Do your thing. Oh, I, the wands to me are just the epitome of I am who I am and you're not going to do anything to change it. I'm able to strike out without anybody say so or needing to back me up or pushing me along or the amount of fierce. What is it? What did, um, you know, America's Today's top model, what's her name? Uh, smize. They have, they always have the smize. Come on. Damn it. There it is. I'm 50 in March, but I think there's been a mistake because I can't be that old. I know. I'm telling you, Stephen. I, I, when somebody says 50, I'm like, oh, that's. I still kind of am like, oh, that's kind of old. You're getting up there. And I'm almost there. Peter is, oh, Peter's 50 in July. And I'm not far behind, so. All right, here we go with the cups. We have the leaves. Here's the leaves with the cups. You feel 70. Oh, today you do, Dana, and I know, sweetheart. But once we get through this cancer shit and we beat it, and it's behind you, and you're striking out, and next year you're coming to Wichipalooza, you're going to look back and think, ha, that was hell, but I made it. 
50s are fabulous. There you go. I tell you, every a 30 was a hard year for me because it was like the first year that I couldn't say it wasn't a kid anymore. Like I was kind of like, wow, this is really grown up. And it's all been uphill from there. I've loved all these years because you know what? I am much more confident in who I am. I'm much more, I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. I'm much more me and proud to be me. And if you don't like it too bad, I don't care. Two of cups. Look at those awesome women. Thirty, and I still feel twenty-one. Awesome. Born in seventy-two, ninety-nine was a good year. I know Y two K, right? As I reach sixty, I'm feeling more like a kid again. There you go. We're aged like fine wine and cheese. That's right. I the older you get. At least to me, the older you get, I love that too. Oh, are they happy? Um, the older you get, the more you grow into yourself. And you don't worry about what other people think of you. And you don't, um, you just don't care what, I, not that you don't care. I shouldn't say it like that. But you are who you are, and nobody's going to look at you funny and make you think you shouldn't be that. And it's much easier to be the confident, awesome you that you are. The more you don't sweat the small stuff. Exactly. That's a great Three of Cups. I love that it's men. It's never men. The Three of Cups is always three women, which I love because, you know, I love my, my kindred women. But I love that there's three men. Men can be very kindred together. At least they used to be. They're getting back to it. I think more and more men are. What is Witchy Palooza? <gasps> Witchy Palooza is in June, June 18th through the 25th. It is in upstate New York, between Roch or in outside of Rochester, between Syracuse and Buffalo. Uh, come and camp, and we do classes, and I teach Reiki and tarot, and I have guest teachers and speakers. Um, and we learn how to do witchy shopping at like thrift stores and we do drum circles at night, uh, and rituals and Lucy's doing biking braids. Um, and it's just an amazing fellowship for, um, fellow witches. Oh, look, a men three of cups. And a woman, three of cups. How close to Lilydale? Uh, we're not far. We're about, uh, all right. I would say, I think we're about two hours away. Huge gathering of fun times. That's right. It's a bonding experience for sure. It is. You can find it in, an, in the event on Facebook. I love that there's a three of cups for women and there's three of cups for men. There we go with the duality part of the cards. Love it. Thank you. How many people show? I'll tell you, we had uh, 20 last year. This year, I think there's going to be a lot more because people saw how it was and saw how people got along and saw how awesome people loved it. So I, I'm expecting probably 50. Four of cups. Is she sad? Let's see. She's sad but hopeful. So it's like an actual meetup. It is. I Here's the thing. I don't charge anything to come because I want as many people to come as you can, which is why I say it's just a meetup because um, I have a big, big, big yard. And so if you bring a tent, then you don't have to pay for housing because uh, you can tent right here on my property. Uh, if a tent is not for you, there is literally a cheap motel, three houses down the street. Um, your week off was approved. Mine too today, Ben. So I don't have to quit my job. <laughs> um, literally down the street. Uh, so, and it's kind of a cheapo motel, but you're not going to spend a whole lot of time there. It's clean. It's just, you know, a little cheapy motel if you need that. So it's really just about getting here and paying for food or chipping in for food or 
What is the name of the motel? It is, I, I will list it on the event. Um, cause I can't, Deb, is Deb still on here? She stayed at it last year and I literally, I pass it every day. Do you think I can remember it? Bates Motel? No. It's like, I think it's a budget in Motel 8. Budget in. Yes, it's a budget in. And it is in Parrington. P-E-R-I-N-T-O-N on Route 31. Parrington, New York. Here's a Five of Cups. Look at his hole in his sweater on the Five of Cups. And do I see two cups? Yep. Two cups are full. So what do I say? Five of Cups. What's he doing? He's staring at those three cups that have spilled. And what does he need to do? I know you guys know this. I say it every time. I'm trying to wait for delay. Five of Cups. You just have to do one thing. Turn around. That's right. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> Turn around. You have two full cups behind you waiting for you to just turn around and enjoy your life again. Yes, some things spilled. Yes, sucks sometimes. But you have two full cups to appreciate behind you. Turn around. Hi, Jazz. Six of cups. Look at these cutie patooties. How cute is that? Turn around. Every now and then I get on. Yep. Got me singing again, damn it. <laughs> Who did I miss? Somebody came in? Hi, Heather. Did I say hi to you? They were both child slaves. Oh, oh, Carrie. <gasps> Look at them. They're beautiful. That kind of makes it a sad card, too, though. But cool story but it's like oh oh you're both child slaves oh. that is i what a now i'll never forget that though the name of the deck is the relative tarot and oracle it's both together seven of cups Love this. You know why? Sometimes people put goofy things in the seven of cups. They put goofy things in the cups. And that's okay, too. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Um, but sometimes stuff is, I'm like, what is that? What? What? How do I? Hmm. I like that he's blindfolded, too. So not only is he kind of overwhelmed by all these choices and mm, which direction do I go. Now he's doing it without it. He's like, I, uh, I just, I don't, uh. Can I multitask? Maybe if I put this blindfold on, it'll help me to focus more. It kind of reminds me of the force. You know, um, when when Mark Hamill put, or Mark Hamill, you know, Luke Skywalker, when they put the helmet on so he couldn't see and he felt the force more. Sometimes you need to just feel the force, peoples. Use your intuition. Eight of Cups. I love this fierce, fierce fox. She is ready to walk away. Close your eyes and stick a pin in. That's right. Look at her. You can tell she is a vintage chickie. But I love that she is all put together. You know, like she's just that modern woman of those times. Which means she's fierce. She's like, I'm going to walk away from this because this is not mine. She has to have a corset on. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. She is ready to move on. She's like, you know what? I stacked them up all nice and pretty. I worked really hard on them. And then once I got them up there, I realized this is not mine. I don't know what the hell I'm doing spending all this time on this. Don't let the doorknob hit you where the dog should have bit you. That's right. I love it. That face. Nine of cups. Hi, Earthy. Love, love, love that. That is unusual for vintage, right? That kind of sassy, I love it. She grew up in wealth. Until, right? Ten of Cups. Okay, two different Ten of Cups cards, too. Love it. Here's one. Ah. Oh. 
I, I'm so sorry that you have my Christmas lights on my magnifying glass here. But I love, look at the guy with the pipe. Oh, I love that. Now that she's wearing pants. Absolutely, Serana. That's what I mean, though, that she is fierce. She is, now, and back in those days, you didn't do that. So, the fact that she is wearing pants and she's got that look like, yeah, I don't care. Even more rare. And here's the other Ten of Cups. Love, love, love this. The family you were born in and the other is the family you choose. Our squirrel family, guys. You hear that? It is your tribe. Your tribe that you choose. Which for most of us, let's be honest, is closer than the family that we were born into, isn't it? It surely, surely is. All right. And then... The court cards, there's two page of cups. Is this deck available? Well, I know it's going to be. I don't know if she's um, taking pre-orders already, Carrie, um, or if we have to wait for, um, for sure for all the Kickstarter decks to go through. Much more than most of my family. I know, me too. So here we have two pages of cups. Two page. Is page plural already? Two page of cups. Two pages. I guess it's not pages. It will be in February on my site, but I think we should do a giveaway here. Oh, Carrie, that would be fabulous. My squirrels would love it. They would love it. Squirrels. Would you? Uh, that would be amazing. Knight. Oh, he is. He reminds me of Captain Hook. Look at him. Yes. <laughs> oh. He is like Casanova, right? Charging right into relationships, love. He's that um, common slash. <laughs> I love it, the slash. Come into my life and um, I'm going to love everyone a lot around me and make new friends and not afraid to emotionally connect. And, you know, sometimes he gets hurt. But I would rather be this way, right? <sighs> Queen. <sighs> Sorry about my phone, you guys. I don't, I don't, I don't get, is that, what? <laughs> Hi, Trash. I have a serious question for you. Real quick. What, honey? When you potty trained these boys, did you tell them not to pee all over the fucking floor? <laughs> <sighs> Floor. It would be great if they could lift the seat. That's why See, they don't have for years, anymore. sorry guys, I have 14, well, I, four teenage boys, four adult boys now. Actually, yeah, the, the youngest is 18 now. There's a their entire of lives, place. their entire lives, we, the, my compromise was I put all the seats down for a while. So that everyone had to lift the seat. And then that still didn't work. So then I was like, okay, guess what? I'll put it back up when I'm done. As long as you don't put it down and pee on it. That would be great. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to sit on a wet seat in the middle of the night. Nope. It didn't matter. There's pee in the toilet. They don't ever flush. Yep. And then there's pee on the ground. So that's right. <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? Yep. Oh. Yeah, that's right. That's why I'm glad I have my downstairs bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the king. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. Look at same thing. These the faces on these guys are amazing. Oh my god. The pure confidence and embodiment of emotion. Tell mine if you can't aim set. I me too. I, and it didn't matter. Literally, my uh, compromise was, I'll put the seat up. 
I don't care. I will always have the seat up for you. As long as you don't put it down and pee on it. It didn't matter. All right, there's, I'm, I'm talking about pee with the deck, guys. Um, <laughs> one extra card in the, in the uh, tarot part, which is the wish card. Love it. Isn't that gorgeous? Exactly. And I'm so happy to be in the downstairs bathroom. I can't even tell you. Cannot even tell you. You have the plague. Oh, Deb. I'm telling you, that flu is going around terribly. Um, how many times I fell in the toilet for not checking? I would rather fall in the toilet than sit on a wet seat. <laughs> it was horrible. Horrible. When you slide on pee because there's a mass pile of pee on the ground. Ugh. It's like a... All right, all right. <sighs> okay, so that was the tarot part. This is the little book that comes in here. Um, now, like I said, because, and Carrie, maybe you can help us, because my, um, my life path card is the same number, no matter what I do, the numbers at the beginning of the, um, major arcana cards that correlates to that. So there's a lot more that we're going to be able to do with this deck guys, a lot more. These um, 22, 0, 13, 4, that is the tarot blueprint that has to do with your life path number. Um, because mine is so short, I just got really confused. <laughs> because it, mine goes down to 9. And I, so I've always known my, my card is the hermit card. And it's the hermit card no matter which way you do it. Like some people add together the one nine seven and two instead of 1972 minus september so 9 26 1972 and when you break it down it's like 2007 or something like that i can't remember off the top of my head but so it's there's not a whole lot of breakdown it just goes down to nine really easily and then that's it like there isn't a whole lot of extra numbers on there because that's it. <laughs> so I'm always like, mm, I don't, I'm, I, it made me confused just because I was like, all right, I don't have all that other stuff though. I just have nine. I don't think I have a shadow number or, or the single number thing. <laughs> a double nine with an 18 is my shadow card. Oh, I didn't think about the double nine. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense. I don't know why I didn't think of, duh, the double nine, because nine either way. And all right. I like it. That's good. That is um, a really interesting card to have as a shadow card. I don't know. Well, actually, when I think of my personality, like I said now, to me, I'm much more comfortable uh, in the moonlight. And um, with shadows around. And I'm not a sunlight person anyway. So I, that kind of, I can, I can see that. That my shadow would be the sun. So let me take a drink here. That totally makes sense. I'm totally in the right business. Oh, good. I'm so excited. This year and last, I got the Hierophant for my year card. My year card this year is the uh, Hanged Man, which is totally perfect because I'll tell you what, I'm only going to make it at my day job for another year. And then that's it. That is it. <laughs> like, I've had enough. I, my guides have been pushing me off the cliff pretty much, um, waiting for me to quit the day job, um, which, you know, I, I love kind of for some things, for stability, <laughs> for health insurance, um, and for people. I love people, but this is, you know, you guys know, this is what I need to do. So I, 
it's coming. I, I only have one more year of sacrifice to get to doing this full time. How do you figure out your 2020 card? Instead of your birth year, you add 2020. Instead of 19, whatever, 2000, whatever, for you real youngins. So, ah. Uh, all right. So, in this deck, I'm loving this. This year, there's a lot of decks that are coming out that have the Oracle deck that is right with it, which works so well when you are reading tarot. And hi, Yuma. Holly from Yuma. Uh, works so well when you are a tarot reader that always pulls an oracle card for um, confirmation or for clarification. This works great. And I really love the keywords on this. You're going to make deck addicts out of all of us. I know, I know, it's terrible. Um, again, same back. So they already go together. They already flow well together. They already complement each other. Um and I love, love, love these images. And sometimes, guys, I, I'll be honest with you, sometimes the keywords, I'm like, ah, what am I going to do with that? These keywords, I'm, I'm good. Come on, academic? I'm totally good with that. I can flow with that, no problem. Hi, my name is Dana, and I'm a tarot addict. Hi, Dana. I'm Jen. I'm Mama Squirrel. Um... I have, oh, I, nope, I was going to say I have one day without buying a tarot deck, but that's not true because this morning is when I bought that Baba Studios deck. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm excited to make a massive deck with all of them. That'd be cool, Anne. I have to say, now, I can't do that. For me, I've got to keep it separate because tarot says something specific for me when I'm reading for other people. Maybe for myself. No, I don't, probably not even for myself. Um, and then the Oracle, they, um, you know, they compliment. They clarify. They give me a little bit more information when I need more information and stuff. Hi, my name is Shauna, and I'm an all witchy things addict. Oh, yeah, I definitely should have said that for sure. Um, speaking of which, addiction. <laughs> One hour without buying a deck. <laughs> Perfect timing. Look at that. The universe says, yes, you do have a problem. <laughs> Aw, thank you. I know I am too. I To have Frankie in there. Now, here's the thing. The universe decided, Ancestry. I'm so glad that um, all of a sudden, you know what? Ancestry didn't used to be an Oracle decks. Um, they had spirit guides sometimes. They had uh, different, like, ascended masters, you know, with our favorite there, CBR. Um, you didn't buy one single deck today? Oh, my gosh. Well, you still have time, I think, girl. Um, all of a sudden, people are, are tuning in that you can ask your ancestors. Your, your ancestors can clarify things for you that... Um, Maybe people weren't aware of before. I love that there is ancestry in there. Artistry. Ah, uh, she is awesome. Where is my... Here it is. That card. These are your ancestors? Oh, how cool is that? That is amazing. Oh, how cool. It, I can't even tell you, Carrie. It must be really <sighs> universe-wise satisfying to work so hard, like I'm sure you had to have, to manifest this thing that the universe drops into your lap and says, this is what I want you to do. And I'm sure the first time you think that, you think, oh, that's a lot of work. I don't know. Can I do this? Is this, you know? And then get to the point where now you're watching people unbox your deck and they're showing your ancestor and ah, how satisfying, how perfectly like that moment of manifestation of, yes, here it is all come together. 
The universe dropped something in my lap and here it is. That, ah, that's like the, the goal, right? For all of us in a spiritual community, that's the goal is to get to that point where you can see that manifestation of ah, completion, right? It is a lot of work. I, I, I am absolutely certain that it is a lot of work. Ah, Carrie, I have been, it's funny, I have been, you know, throwing ideas around in my head for years. I'm not an artist, so I have a couple different, actually, Shaley, I think, is still here. Her and I um, are just starting to kind of work with um, maybe coming out with a deck someday. But very, very beginning process. Last year, I worked, my husband is an artist, so we kind of did some cards last year. That would be great. I would love that. I have to say, you know, I didn't think about this, but look at that. Okay, as a Libra, I love this card. Balancing act. Uh, so I have to say, I've heard all these horror stories about China, but about printing in China. Um, but then you look at how expensive it is to print a DAC in the States and you think, ah, oh, how am I going to do that? Unless, you know, you want to charge an arm and a leg, but you worry about, all right, you love your printer in China. I have to say, I love the quality of the cards are amazing. And I love the quality. I love the matte finish. I love the, this must be that, you know, the newer plastic kind of cards. How do you ensure that China is not going to steal your images and reproduce your deck? Is there, do you, is it in your contract? Is there, and what, what repercussion do you have? Because it's like impossible to sue China. Everything is a risk. That's true. Absolutely. Ah, blessing. I love that. That's okay, Kay. We all have those nights. Bohemian. Absolutely everything is a risk. But I, I would think, I just worry, I guess. And it's funny because I'll tell you, I'm not a worrier. I'm not one, you know, a lot of people were erasing content on YouTube because of the new laws and that you might get fined and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'm out here with my heart and spirit. And I feel like if the universe decided that I needed to be fined $4,000 or something for reading a pagan children's book, then I don't know. I guess that's the way it was supposed to be. I'm not one that is a panicker person. There's no way to protect all of your work. That's true. You just have to get it out there before someone else takes your idea. That's true. But I have to say, boy, bye, Holly. Um... That is the one thing I think I would worry about is because China is so bad at that right now, especially at just taking property, intellectual property, um, that, you know, in less than a year, they could like reprint your deck and, and there's almost nothing you can do about it. it to me, I would like fly to China. <laughs> I would be, Russia is worse? Really? See, now I didn't know that. I, I would be so, t I'd be like banging on their doors. <laughs> be like, hello, probably because I'm a Libra. <laughs> you did go to China. That's right. I remember seeing that in the, um, in the comments and stuff, the um, updates. <gasps> Look at that. Camouflage. Oh, I love that card. Oh, uh, some days. You need that camouflage. You need to just blend in and not make waves today and just hide a little bit for the day so you don't get in trouble. <laughs> There's a lot of days I need that. <laughs> chance. Yay, it's always a chance. Communism is a hell of a drug. <sighs> Beautiful. These cards. Oh, I can't wait. So I don't um, use a deck. Like I don't shuffle them and uh, do a reading for them until I do my unboxing. So I'm really excited. Now I can sage the deck and um, shuffle them tomorrow and finally start doing readings. 
and see how they read, which I just know they're going to read so fantastically. Civil servant. Oh, to have that call to be a civil servant. So, so many more. And yet we cut off China instead of Russia. Well, China does it a lot too. Absolutely. How they shuffle. Oh, I can tell you right now. Wait, you want me to shuffle? Riffle shuffle? Because you know me, guys. I'm a riffle shuffler. I know people panic. All right, there are decks that I don't. My Baba Studios decks, I don't riffle shuffle. Well, no, that's not true. Yes, I do. Because they can take it. They're, they're good. And these are going to be fantastic. Ready? You ready to hear it? Get in touch and I'll send you a deck. Carrie, that would be fantastic. Fantastic. I will. Did you hear it? Did you? I can't do it on the camera because I'm up here. But did you hear it? They shuffled amazingly. <laughs> yes. Um, my squirrels here will adore this deck. Aha! See? I, I see all the, sh the fellow riffle shufflers. Bye, Carrie. Thank you so much for coming on, and I will uh, email you. And I so appreciate it. And feel free, if you want to, to use this, you know, to um, show people a review of the deck. That doesn't bother me at all. So does Pat. You have to. Well, all right, you don't have to, but I like to. Communication. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Look at the old-timey phone. You can almost picture, like, Alexander Graham Bell putting his wife on. <laughs> right? I have to riffle shovel. I, the decks, I'll be honest with you, the decks that I use the most are the ones that I don't have to worry about what happens if I riffle shuffle and are they going to fall apart and stuff. Those are the ones I use the most. And this one can take it. Competition. Oh, competition is so good. So, um, did I, who said something about the wings? As a legit OCD sufferer, I can be that queen of worry. Speaking of which, have you, any of you watched Boy George's King of Everything? I, I have not. Ooh, I'm going to have to look. Um, so someone said something about the wings. I have to say, I, usually I'm with you because I'm not an angel person. I don't see these guys as angels, though. I see them as guides. And to me, guides have wings, too. Um, they just don't use them to, you know, fly back and forth to heaven. There's something about a deck that's been used so much and looks aged and old. Yeah, my like my Witch's Tarot, Ellen Dugan's Wick. Oh, my gosh. Look at this card. All right. That might be my favorite. <laughs> Oracle card of the whole deck. All right, maybe not. But this is amazing. Hold on. Look at. Look at. <laughs> that is awesome. Is he a chicken? <laughs> yes, he's a chicken. Which, of course, so reminds me of um, uh, uh, Back to the Future. Did you call me a chicken <laughs> I love chickens too I miss our chickens we can't have them anymore because we got busted defense love it delusion <laughs> ah dictatorship and that is a woman dictator. Yes. All right, because let's be honest. A lot of us are the dictators of the house nowadays. It doesn't have to be the, uh, the man anymore, is it? <laughs> Disconnect. So important sometimes to turn around and just turn your back on stuff and say, nope, disconnecting from this right now. Ah, 
Look at her face. Drama. All the drama. You said dictator. <laughs> My parents have the chickens without feathers on their, oh really? On their keck? Elegance. Oh. All right, I know I've been doing this a lot. It's the same butterfly wings for all the butterfly winged ones, right? Ah, look at that's a totally different wing. Oh wait, is that not a wing? It might not be a wing, that might be a blanket. This is elegance. What an elegant gent. Love me some sepia, me too. Love, love, love. Entertainment. Ah, uh, exploration. Woo! He is going out there. He's handsome, right? I know, the elegance one, he was. Young, but handsome. Forget me not. How sweet. Frame of reference. My mother-in-law has turkins. They are a mix of chicken and turkey. Really crazy looking, but they peck my ass every time I'm there. <laughs> I love that one, too. Lots of old matriarchs. My great-grandmother-in-law might have been tiny, but she was handy with the frying pan Rapunzel style. There you go. Guardian. Ah. Ah. I love to... Oh. All right, so of course my head goes to a story. To me, this is big sister who died and now is watching over. Which is weird because I don't do the angel thing very much, but boy, that one hit me like kind of a, a guardian angel. Harvest. Yes. So everything we do is about the harvest, right? Is it harvest time? Is it not harvest time? Is harvest time coming? When is harvest? Have you seen the trailer for Gretel and Hansel? I have not. Um, speaking of Netflix, though, oh, look at her. Heeding the call. Here's my magnifying glass. Heeding the call. Oh, look at her. She is cool. Really cool. Um... I have to tell you, we watched tonight, before I came on, we watched, yep, Dancer, uh, we watched the new Dracula that just came on Netflix. So good. So good. It's time for bed. Okay, we've got quite a few, guys. This is a huge Oracle deck and a huge tarot deck. Here, I'm going to try to go quick because, oh my goodness, it's been an hour and 43 minutes. Horse's ass. Yay. Okay. Um, giveaway. Let me think. I'm going to think of humor. Um, if you want to be a part of the giveaway, imitation. Yes, the new Dracula. It, now, they remind me of Sherlock. Um, because they're like an hour and a half long episodes. Good night, Northern. We don't like quickies with Mama. Take your time. I know. I'm trying. All right, giveaway. What do we want? I want something in the comments. You have to comment something. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. My brain is starting to shut down. Innocence. Aww. What's she, oh, you know who she reminds me of? Um, Pet Cemetery. The little kid in Pet Cemetery. Just because that's where my brain goes. Intuition. Like one of the most important cards in the deck. It was written by the same guy that did Sherlock. It was! Oh, that makes so much sense now. Because it kind of reminds, it's not 
Sherlock at all, but it, it kind of reminds me of that flow, and it's the same length as there's only three episodes, but they're an hour and a half long. Um, but they're a great hour and a half. The first We just watched the first one right before I came out. It was awesome. Really, really good. Way better than I thought it was going to be. It's got, like, humor to it and, you know, drama and gore a little bit, and it was good. Invitation. All right, guys, help me think. How do you guys want to win this giveaway? Carrie is going to so graciously give us a deck to give away. How about a favorite card from the deck? All right. I like it. A favorite card from the deck and why. You have to say why that's your favorite card. I don't want to just hear my favorite card is the High Priestess. I want to hear why that's your favorite card. Yes. I have seen the new Pet Cemetery. Ooh, I like that one. Labor. Uh, I have seen the new Pet Cemetery and I I liked it. It was, it was a little different. I liked it. John Lithgow, get, bleh, John Lithgow is in it, which Dracula on Netflix, it just came out today. It's just called Dracula. In the deck you have what? What, Trish? What did I miss? Did I miss something? Um, you hated it. Did you, Dana? I, I liked it. It wasn't it wasn't the original in the deck you have. Um in this deck. All right. I was disappointed in Pet Cemetery. I wanted them to really take it there and they didn't. Yeah. I know what you mean. It was um I was trying to like the whole time give it the benefit of the doubt because I'm a Libra and that's what I do. Um it was not the original. I like the original way better, but it was enjoyable. I really, I love John Lithgow and he was in it. So, um, the favorite card from the deck that we are looking at. Yes, you can say that. I want both though. I want to know what your favorite, um, card overall. Like, yes, I want to hear first, let's say first you need to put down what your favorite card is in this deck. And why? Like, it's really cute. It made me think of something I didn't think of before. Whatever. Um, but I really want to hear, in general, my favorite tarot deck card. The card that when I get a deck, and when I get a new deck, I look through for this one card first. Is this and why? Okay? I love her. Opportunity. Why don't we do it as a comment on this video? That's right. Exactly. You need to comment on this video when it's over in, you know, in the comment section. I'm still learning. That's okay. You could still be learning and have one card that every time you see, like every time I see the moon card or every time, Hexen and I, we, it's the nine of swords. Every time we see the nine of swords, we're like, oh, there's my nightmare card. Does it show nightmares? Does it, whoops. What does it show? Panache. I love that. That's like a Dapper Dan. Panache. Partnership. Lots and lots of Oracle cards, guys. Mine is the Rooster one. I think that was cowardly or uh, coward. Popularity. So when this is over, come back. Like, make sure you like the video, guys, so we can get more people on the video. Because I'm not going to announce the giveaway. Uh, mm, maybe I will. Maybe I'll announce the giveaway uh, on the title. When it's done, it'll say, and giveaway. Reflection. Was the ancestry card, because you don't see that so much in the deck. It made me think of my grandmother. Ah. I love it. Make sure you come back and write that on the comment section. I'm usually drawn to the death card. See? My first card. I have to say my first card. Pat just got home. Yay! Uh, 
that I look at is usually the Nine of Swords. I love the Nine of Swords cards because there's so many different ways to do it. And I have so many ideas. Like I could make a deck full of Nine of Swords cards. Do you want us to share it on social media? Yeah, you can do that. I'll share it into the group and then you can share on social media too. I'll put it on Instagram and Facebook. And we will give it, shoot, what's the date? Today is the 10th, tomorrow's the 10th, because it's the full moon tomorrow. Do you want a VR? Oh, I'd love to. If you want to do a VR, that sounds good to me. In fact, if you do a VR, I'll give you another, another chance in the pot. Sibling. Silver Spoon. Snake Charmer. Solidarity. Comment below the video after it's posted. Sorceress. Ooh, look at her. She knows exactly how to perform the magic she needs. I'm taking the Five of Swords out of all my decks. I don't blame you, Steven, <laughs> at all. <laughs> Pat missed what's going on. Pat, so we had the, the creator of the deck in, Carrie, and um, she really liked what we were doing, and she's giving us a deck to give away from my channel. So you have an opportunity to get this deck. This is a tarot and oracle deck. It's a huge oracle deck. I want to say there's 80 oracle cards too, but I don't know for sure. Hang on. Does it say on here? Doobie doo. Preface. There's lots of good information in this book, guys, but she's also doing an entire course about this deck. So I'm really excited about it. Yes, the 80 spirit cards. 80. So it's like getting a whole nother deck on top of it. Here's Tribe. Vanity. And there is um, several, several uh, dual cards in the tarot deck. So you can either leave them in or if one speaks to you and one doesn't, you can take some out. I love, ah, oh, all right. I love the chicken one, but I kind of love this one too. Visionary. All right, except, nope, I still do. It's just my eyes. So my eyes are a little bit blurry and that bird looked like he had some big old balls. But anyways, <laughs> I'm going to skip right by that because it's just my eyes. Wait, right, now I have to prove it. <laughs> See, it's just the tail feathers. <laughs> It is beautiful. I love the vintage look. And this is the last card is wise guy. What a wise guy. <laughs> oh, terrible. Okay. I'm loving it. I'm so glad Carrie came on. That is just awesome. You guys get this awesome opportunity to get this gorgeous deck in your hands. Um, I'm telling you. It is, I love that the um, cards now are coming out with the, the core, the color is in the core. So the, the edgings here will never chip off. The matte finish is gorgeous. It feels gorgeous. It's not going anywhere. There's no way these cards are going to break down real easy. Um, really, really quality deck. And guess what? She said they come from China and I don't have a migraine because it doesn't stink, <laughs> which I know is my weird, goofy thing. But all the most of the decks that have been coming from China lately, I'm like, whoo, I got to leave them out for a while because that chemical smell is killing me. These do not. Yes, I will put a link to the deck in the description for sure. Um, I'm going to give this... What is the date? Date's the 10th. Okay, I'm going to give this until the new moon. 
So whenever that is, because I don't have my moon calendar up right now, but I will list it. Um, we're going to give it to the new moon uh, to enter the giveaway. Uh, I need your comments down below of what your favorite tarot card is in general. The 24th. Thank you, Anne. Your favorite tarot card in general is that Chinese poison. I know, right? Um, like what card you immediately go for when you are doing a deck and uh, what card is your favorite card in this deck, the relative tarot deck? Comment down below. If you want another entry, you can do a VR to it and I will put your name in twice. All right. We are at almost two hours. You guys rock for hanging in there. 14 days from the 10th. Oh, shut up, Steven. It's late. I mean, all right. It's really not late, is it? It's almost nine o'clock. That's, I only had three hours of sleep last night. <laughs> Terrible. That box is everything. Yeah, the box is gorgeous too. I told you guys. I, oh, really gorgeous and holds everything all in there. All right. I will put all the information in the down bar. Um, I'll list it on Instagram. Feel, fair, feel free to share it. And uh, on Facebook, on our group, okay? I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Witchy Palooza. We'll talk more about Witchy Palooza next time. Um, but, nice meeting you too. But, suffice it to say, it is a witchy meetup. It is in Rochester, outside of Rochester, New York, June 18th to the 25th. We're going to have um, a meeting, like a planning meeting, very soon. Um, so look for the event on Facebook, and I'm going to make a private event because I know some of you didn't want to comment on that event because it was um, public. So I get that, and I'll, I'll switch it out, okay? I love you guys so, so much. Have a good night, and I'll see you all tomorrow.